Think of football and Brazil comes to mind. The five-time World Cup winners are in a league of their own. From Pelé to Neymar, the game's most dazzling and scintillating stars have worn the iconic yellow jersey of the Seleção. For several decades, the Brazilian national side, or the Seleção, as they are known affectionately, have dazzled fans around the world, capturing the imagination of millions, if not billions. This is a country that's produced some of the most insanely talented players world football has ever seen. Brazil won the first two editions of Copa America in 1919 and 1922, but it was Uruguay who would go on to win the inaugural World Cup in 1930. Brazil's wait for the World Cup would continue after the war, the favourites for the 1950 edition coming into the tournament on the back of another Copa America triumph would lose to Uruguay at home soil. It would be Germany's turn to lift the Jules Rimet trophy, but the Seletal would go on to become world champions in three of the next four editions. From then on, Brazilian football would put fear into the hearts of rivals. Their samba style has helped them rule over Sweden, Czechoslovakia, Italy twice, and Germany in the World Cup finals. They have lost only twice in World Cup finals, but since then, things haven't been that memorable. It's been 18 years since their last triumph, the national side failing to make the most of the talented individuals at their disposal. Ronaldinho, Ronaldo and Rivaldo's goals allowed them to lift the trophy in front of 70,000 supporters at the famous Yokohama Stadium in 2002. Since then, Brazil have failed to make the grade in international competitions. France beat them in quarter-finals in 2006, Netherlands dumped them at the same stage four years later in South Africa, 2014 was supposed to be their year, but it ended in their biggest disappointment. Neymar-led Brazil were thrashed 7-1 by eventual champions Germany in front of home support as their golden boy could only watch the game from the stands. With a more settled squad, expectations were high in 2018. They were cautious and wary of a repeat of what happened in Maracana, but Brazil faltered again, with Aiden Hazard and company easily dismantling their much-fancied counterparts. Brazil have made it out of the group stages but have failed in the knockout stages. The Seletao are victims of their own success. Teams are more cautious against them as even a mere mention of them puts fear into opposition. But their poor results are not because rivals defend deeper against them. It's because there are problems with their domestic setup that's now impacting the national side. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another exciting video on your favourite channel Goalside which aims to force you into looking at the game very deeply and finding out things that you might not get to see anywhere else. We keep churning out cool stuff all the time so if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, like our videos and share them with your friends if they argue with you about a particular topic. Trust us, our arguments are going to make them think. In today's video we're going to cover a lot of aspects that deal with why Brazil are failing at the grandest stage. We're not suggesting the Samba Nation will not be competent in the upcoming Copa America, but we're merely pointing out interesting facts that are being overlooked by the Brazilian Football Confederation. The video will see us talk about Brazilian sides in World Cups, their domestic season, migration of players in the ill-timed transfer windows, and how it all impacts the national team. So let's begin on a journey that might rile you up, make you stand up and admit that things aren't as rosy as they've been made out to be, or even start a debate in the comments section. The Club World Cup the Club World Cup is a good gauge of the visible gulf between European and South American sides. Only three Brazilian sides have triumphed in the meeting of continental champions. Corinthians began the fashion in 2000 and managed to triumph again 12 years later. They were succeeded by Sao Paulo and Internacional in successive years 2005 and 2006 respectively. European clubs did not fancy the first editions of the competition but they have not let up since. The last time a Brazilian side won the FIFA Club World Cup was in 2012. Corinthians came up against the Chelsea side in disarray and made the most of the opportunity. While the Copa Libertadores win was still fresh for Corinthians, the Blues had been dumped out of the Champions League six months after winning it. It was an off-colour game with the English side prioritising the upcoming games during the congested Christmas Premier League fixtures. Six years ago, Liverpool had done the same. It was Sao Paulo who beat them in Japan, and the Reds were bound to make the same mistake had Roberto Firmino not come to their cause. It was a close game and the European champions only made it across the finishing line in the Khalifa International Stadium in extra time. Flamengo were hard done, but the Copa Libertadores champions were coming into the tournament after a gruelling year, while the rivals were just nearing the first half of their 1920 campaign. Only the 2011 Copa Libertadores winners, Santos, had a decent chance of winning the competition. With Neymar in their ranks, the South American champions posed a threat to Barcelona However, Messi and company were too strong for Santos. Neymar had held off from a transfer to Europe before that, but the difference between the two sides made up his mind. 
He would join the Catalans in a dubious transfer, but returned to the same arena alongside Messi and Suarez to trounce River Plate. Transfer window debacle upon debacle. Following Neymar's departure, Santos were left in disarray and have not been the same side since. And this brings us to the problems caused by the transfer window. It's right in the middle of Brazil's domestic season and cannot be avoided. Top stars who've performed in the first half of the season have scouts dissecting their every move. Many leave, but many more have their heads turned by the glamour of European football, not to mention the riches on offer. Like other South American sides, Brazilian clubs are poached in the middle of the season and have difficulty continuing in the same vein afterwards. The loss of top players impacts their performances and impacts the results on the pitch, and those who remain, their focus changes after increased attention. Media interviews and an introduction to hype and glamour impacts them. It's already difficult to perform consistently over the course of a season, and the increased distractions have a negative impact. While this is all fair and part of the game, Brazilian football has also been impacted by the poaching of young stars. Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Barbosa only had two seasons in their homeland before they packed up their bags and left for Europe. While at Sao Paulo, Edio Militao followed the same trajectory a year later. The trio left Brazil before turning 20 and had yet to mature as footballers. They showed glimpses of potential and left for pastures new, never showing the domestic audience what they're capable of doing. While Jesus had flourished at City, the same could not be said of Barbosa, who returned home after a disastrous year and a half away. Gabigol is back amongst the goals with Flamengo, but at what cost? He was labelled a failure at the tender age of 21. As a consequence of this practice, with the constant departure of players, the competition in Brazilian football is impacted. The league is full of players who cannot make the grade in top European leagues and are there just to make up the numbers. Rarely has a top player continued to play in the Samba Nation beyond 25. Players like Pato and Robinho have returned, but only after burning out in Europe. If this was not a problem, there's a new phenomenon among European clubs. Hungry to get the next Brazilian star and not to miss out on the next Neymar, clubs are poaching youth academies for their top talents. Teenagers of potential are leaving the Serie A after a handful of appearances, and in some cases without even appearing for their club sides. Cash-strapped, Brazilian clubs allow these players to move to make ends meet. The main culprit of this exercise has been Real Madrid. Vinicius, Rodrigo and Reina were bound to join Los Blancos when they would turn 18. Negotiations completed with their competent representatives when they were as young as 16. Barcelona are not far behind and have perfected this art of poaching. Argentine football has never seen Messi try out for a local side, as he was signed from Newell's Old Boys Youth Academy as a 14-year-old. English and Portuguese clubs are not far behind. Arsenal's latest saviour, Gabriel Martinelli, had only played in Brazil's Serie D, but made his way to the unpleasant English climate when he turned 18, an agreement reached in principle six months ago. So how can Brazilian football fight with their hands tied behind their backs? They can't. The only thing they can do is drive the prices higher, as much as they can, so they can reinvest it in their structures. To put this in perspective, Real Madrid had to pay over 120 million euros to land their three youthful Brazilians. But this is still cheap, when considering Manchester United paid 55 million euros for a then promising yet untested Aaron Wan Bissaka with a single top flight season under his belt. Who has the most international appearances for Brazil? Answer this and you might win a $100 Amazon gift card. Make sure that you write your answers in the comments section. Copa Libertadores Performances With Flamengo being the reigning South American champions, it's wrong for us to rain on their parade, but their winning the competition had more to do with River Plate folding at the clutch moment of their season rather than their brilliance. But before we digress, let's take a look at the other teams from Brazil. With a few exceptions, the squads are built up of burnt-out overage stars or players who were never good enough to cross the Atlantic. Moreover, the numbers are built up of journeymen who have played for up to seven clubs on average. It doesn't make for good reading and is even worse in the mentality of players as they are ready to pack up their bags at the end of the season. Without squad cohesion, churning up results is a stiff task to conjure. It should not come as a surprise to anyone that Brazilian football is in decline. Consequently, it's because of this reason that Brazilian sides have historically underperformed in Copa Libertadores. Only two Brazilian sides have made it to the final since 2014, while six Argentine sides have made it to the final hurdle. Moreover, it's their Argentine neighbours who have won the competition 25 times, with Brazil trailing by six trophies. Impact on national side With stars leaving the mainland, the domestic competition suffers with declining talent pool. 
and you're only as good as the competition you face. Understandably, the understrength Brazilian top flight football has minimalistic representation in the national team, and this has had its impact in international tournaments. Moreover, Europe based stars have to travel across the Atlantic for national team duties. The rigmarole of club football, coupled with gruelling flights, means that preparations with the Seletsa are always at less than 100%. Couple this with the fact that the squad are only meeting every couple of months for a week, and there is not much conditioning or tactical changes the coach can make. In these conditions, injuries do not help their cause. All of these factors combine to have a detrimental impact on Brazil's performances. However, under Tite, the team is making a change for the better. His second team is less turbulent and the squad is showing what they're capable of. The Copa America was won last summer and the Canarinha are looking better. But this should be taken as a caveat. Brazil look good until they don't. And they have always impressed in the group stages of competitions. It's only in the latter stages of the competition that they fail to live up to the mark.